Hello, Klaus. Uh, we're looking at 2.4, use a general strategy to solve linear equations. We have seen uh, equations that have constants on both sides, variables on both sides. Sometimes we had parentheses in our equation and we had to handle that. So this uh, section is gonna teach us general strategy. And uh, the strategy uh, list is uh, provided here. The first step says to simplify both sides and the key word there is to use distributive property if you see any parentheses and also combine like terms. Usually that's our first step. We've always uh, done combined like terms because uh, we didn't see as many problems with the parentheses. But uh, in this section, you're gonna see a combination of all these types. And so you would use the distributive property to remove parentheses and combine like terms to simplify. Step two is to collect all the variable terms on one side of the equation. So this is key because you want your variable on one side. So if you have the same variable repeating in different places in the equation, you want to collect them all to one side of the equation. I usually do it on the left so that uh, we could uh, uh, combine them and we will end up getting one term with the uh, variable. Because you did collect all the variables on one side, now you need to collect, collect all the constants on the other side. If we are collecting the variables on the left, you will collect all the constants on the right. And then we say, make the coefficient of the variable term equal to one. What that means is you want to get x by itself. This just means isolate the variable. And lastly, we will, um, of course, that will lead us to the solution. And lastly, we will check the solution in the original equation. Please, again, uh, do not skip this important step because that is the way we know if we got it right or wrong. So let's look at the first problem. Solve negative times y plus nine equals eight. So uh, we, we go to our general strategy list, the steps. Look at the first step. It says use distributive property and combine like terms. Again, we, we, we use only the properties that are applicable to our problem. In this problem, we can clearly see the parentheses there and uh, you have a minus sign outside the parentheses. So you have to use distributive property. As always, I will rewrite the question. I don't want to tamper it. And distributive property means you'll distribute the minus. Well, if the minus bothers you, think of the minus as a minus one, right? Because if you don't see a number, that, that's a one there. So if, if that's the way you'd like to see it, you could put a one there and you can actually identify it as a negative one being multiplied to the y and the nine. So negative one times y is negative y. Negative one times positive nine is negative nine. If you feel advanced, you don't have to put the one, you can just see it as a minus sign that's being multiplied and that's fine as well. Okay, then now uh, let's uh, scroll up to look at um, the step one itself, which says, after you've done the distribution, combine like terms. So do we have any like terms on the same side? We do not have any like terms on the same side. So we move to step two, which is to collect all variable terms on one side of the equation. We will use addition or subtraction property. Well, we have only one term that has the y, so technically your variable is already on one side of the equation, which means step two, we really didn't have to do anything there. Step three is uh, to collect all the constant terms on the other side of the equation. Now our y is on the left side, so we want to collect all our constants on the right side. Constants are nothing but plain numbers. So we have plus nine, let's get rid of that by adding nine on both sides. This will eliminate the nines. We're left with a negative y, which is equal to eight plus nine, which is 17. Then we move to step four. Step four says make the coefficient of the variable term equal to one. Coefficient is always a number that's attached to the variable. The number that's attached to the variable, you don't see a number, you only see a sign, but you know it's negative one. We do not want a negative one there. We only want the y, we want to isolate y. So um, this step calls for dividing both sides by negative one, okay? If you want, you can put the one there so you can actually see why you're doing the negative one. Okay. And divide by negative one on both sides. 
This takes care of canceling off the negative ones up and down, leaving us with a plain y. Remember, the coefficient should be a one. If there is no number in front of the y, we know the coefficient is one. We don't write that explicitly, but I mention that because if you go back to step four, it says make the coefficient of the variable term equal to one. So we got that part. And 17 over negative one, nothing to divide there because 17 over one is 17, but it's about the sign, so it becomes negative 17. Check the answer. Negative times y plus nine equals eight. Negative, now there is already a parenthesis there, so put another shell for the y. Don't be shy, you know, you can always put a shell there to substitute, even if you have other parentheses in the problem. Remember, PEMDAS works. PEMDAS requires you to follow a certain order, but when it comes to parentheses, uh, um, the, the rule within PEMDAS is that you will start from the innermost parentheses and work outward. So the innermost is the negative 17, but there is no operation going on, so I simply can drop the parentheses. And now I, um, I took care of the innermost parentheses. I still have the parentheses, so I have to um, apply PEMDAS again. Remember, PEMDAS is uh, an iterative process. Each step you apply PEMDAS. You start all over from the beginning. And um, so we took care of the parentheses, the innermost, in the previous step. We're still looking at parentheses, so we have to do what is inside the parentheses. Well, we have some operation going on in here, which means you, you have to now handle this. Negative 17 plus nine is, you subtract the numbers, you get eight, and take the sign of the larger number. All this is happening inside the parentheses. That's why we really love the parentheses, because it gives a very clear distinction what's going on inside and out. We still have the parentheses, but there is no operation going on inside. It's just a negative eight. Therefore, you're, you're allowed to go on to the next step, which is to combine the two negatives, because now you're using basically distribution property. So um, you have uh, negative times negative is positive eight equals positive eight. It's a true statement. Therefore, we imply that y equals negative 17 is the answer. All right, um, let's also look at another type because we have only one, one objective. It's uh, good for us to try another problem. Solve five times a minus three plus five equals negative 10. Okay, so you see the parentheses, there's a number outside. We want to use step one, which is distributive property. Distribute. So that'll be 5a minus, because you're multiplying the 5, 5 times a is 5a, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, plus 5 equals negative 10. Okay, so we use the distributive property in this step. Now, uh, within the first step or in your general strategy, it also says combine the like terms. So once we've done with the, we're done with the distributive property, there are no more parentheses in the, in the equation. We can look for places where we can combine like terms and we do see that here. So let me say, combine like terms. That will be a negative 10 equals negative 10. Now we are good to move to step two. Step two wants us to get the variable terms on one side of the equation. We only have one term that has an A in it. It's already on the left side, so that is good. So no work for step two. We move to step three. Well, if you want to see it again. Yeah. Looking at step two, nothing to do there. So we move to step three. Constant terms on the other side. Collect them on the other side. So we have negative 10. I want to move the negative 10 from, we have two negative 10, so which one do we do? Well, remember, your A is already on the left side, so you have to move that negative 10 that is on the left over to the right because we collect all our 
like terms on the right. All right, something's happening here. Well, this cancels off. This also cancels off. That's strange. Does that mean we did something wrong? Please don't panic. So we have 5a left here and a zero on the right side. Okay, it's not a bad thing. You can have a zero on the other side. Your answer can be a zero because zero is a regular number. It's a regular number like two or five or 10 or negative three or three fourths. It's a, no, it's a proper number for the, for the fact. Zero is the uh, middle term in your number line, right? The whole number line is balanced at zero. So zero is a very, very important, valuable um, number. Don't take it lightly. We continue to isolate A by dividing both sides by five. Now that helps get A by itself. Okay, big question. Zero over five, is that undefined? Is that zero? What is it? Again, don't give room for confusion. Zero over five is a zero because zero over any number is zero. Okay. Um, well, you can think of this like um, how we understand fractions, right? Fraction is zero over five. Okay, so you are, you are trying to share uh, five items, let's say chocolates. You're trying to share five chocolates with how many people? Zero people. Okay. So you're trying to share five chocolates with zero people. What share does each person get? Nothing. So that is how you understand that A equals zero. On the other hand, let me do a quick aside here. If I have a five over zero, then your zero is in the denominator. Denominator means that you have zero chocolates to share. Okay, you have total of zero chocolates and you're planning to share it with five people. Okay, isn't that absurd? <laughs> okay, well that's first of all mean. Okay, because you're say, saying <laughs> you're going to share with five people what you don't have. And so this is a situation where it becomes undefined. So as a general rule, we say, well, if you have zero the denominator, it automatically becomes undefined. But if you think of it practically, that is our case. On the other hand, a zero over five is a zero because zero over any number is zero. Any number over zero is undefined. Okay, I'll leave the check to you. And uh, we will box this answer. And that gives us the uh, solution for this question. And I want to do one more problem, perhaps with fractions. We don't do much fractions, so let's do a fractional problem here. Solve. Um, OK, let's choose this one. 2 over 3 times 6m n minus 3 equals 8 minus n. Okay. Well, again, don't, be, don't panic if you see fractions because fractions are nothing but sharing. If you love to share, if you are a cheerful giver, there shouldn't be a problem. Okay. 2 over 3 means you are sharing 2 parts out of the 3. Okay. There's a total of 3 parts, you're sharing 2. Think of pizza. There are three slices, totally three slices, and you're giving away two. Okay, so two out of three. That's the whole idea of fractions. All right, let's um, take the problem again so that we could apply the distributive property. Uh, in your pre-algebra, you would have learned about um, another technique, which is to clear fractions. When we look at fractions and we want to get rid of them, we take the LCD and we multiply both sides by the LCD. So that's perfectly acceptable here, meaning your LCD here is three because that's the only denominator you see. So you multiply both sides by three and that will clear your fractions. That's one way to do it. Okay. But here I'm just going to do the distributive property. So we will distribute this, but because it's not so straightforward, we will show the distribution in an explicit step. Okay, so 2 over 3 times 6m minus 2 over 3 times 3. Okay, that's what you get upon distribution. And here you can uh, cross cancel the 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. I did choose to do the distribution just because I saw the 3 uh, being divisible by the terms inside the parentheses. So it's just something that you view before you decide which technique to use. If my three would, would not be divisible to the terms up there, 
I would have resorted to LCD, um, the technique of multiplying both sides by the LCD. All right, now let's collect the leftovers. Two times two M is four M minus two times one is two equals eight minus M. Okay, we like this form because we cleared the fraction. This form does not have any fractions. We got that. Now um, we need to uh, go to, so this was step one. Step one was all this. We distribute and we simplify it. Okay, we got it simplified. So let me take you back to step two. Step two is to collect all variables on one side. Step three is to collect all the constants on the other side. Okay. Step three, step four is uh, to isolate. We'll get to that. Okay, constants on one side. I'd like to collect all the m's on the left. So I add m on both sides so that the one on the right, the m, the ne negative m on the right is moved over to the left. So it gives us a positive m. Oh, oops, I'm sorry, I canceled the wrong one. Okay, uh, so 4m plus m is 5m. Again, if you want to see the m with a number, put a one in front of it, so you know it's four plus one, five. 5m minus two equals eight. That was step two. Now we move to step three where we, uh, anyway, let's stop at step two. Step two was to collect all the m's on one side and we did that, right? Therefore, we now move to step two, uh, three. Step three is to collect all the constants on the right side. We'll get all the constants there. So we move the two over to the other side. It's 5m equals 10, a plus two is 10. Divide by five, divide by five, because you need to do the same thing on both sides. They cancel off. Well, this side also is looking good because five divides the 10, two times. So you have m equals two. Again, I uh, implore to perform the check by yourself. Um, I just want to keep the video short so that we stick to the point. And m equals two becomes your answer. Okay. Thank you again, class. I will see you in the next video.